Hey, what's up, fantasy people? Today we're going to be drinking and ranking our top 10 quarterbacks. We just did our 20 through 11 not too long ago, so go check that video out. I'm going to share our rankings with you right now. These are our quarterback rankings. Mine are color-coded for tiers. Jason's are right next to that. And then I averaged the two for the show's rankings, and that's going to be the order that we're going over today. I even color-coded the offensive line rankings. Green is the top third of the league. Yellow is in the middle. And the red is in the bottom third of the league. So take a snapshot, sit back, and enjoy the show. You can do it! Hey, what's up, fans people? This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the sweaty boy, Youth and Wilt, coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Football and Show. Today's episode, we are going to finish our top 10 rankings for the quarterbacks. Well, our top 20 rankings, we're going to go over the top 10 this time. If you haven't watched the 20 through 11, we actually went over a couple more than that 10. Please go back and watch that episode. Jason's family is in town. They are old, and apparently old people love the heat. So Jason's <laughs> sweating, it, sweating it out up there in Washington. So give oh, us a break. Hey, Jason, while you're sweating, you might as well tell the public how they can help this show. Okay, one second while I dehydrate myself more with this beer. <laughs> Dude, I feel better when I'm drinking when it's hot, dude. I don't care what they say. Me, I always, I get more like, I get red and dehydrated because I don't drink enough water throughout the day. But if you made it this far, please hit the subscribe, press the like. We like the likes. If you go text us a comment about what you agree or disagree about our rankings. And if you're into radio, check us out on Spotify at the Fantasy Football End Show. Thank you, Jason. And so like, dude. We don't. We do not get paid for this whatsoever. Like we get, if you do give us like a thumbs up or a comment or a subscribe, like dude, it makes our day because like this takes hours to do. I know it's just for our own fun, but still, man, just to have like you know mm -hmm. recognition, not recognition or whatever, mm -hmm. confirmation, whatever. I'm validation. You know what I'm trying to say? Something with validation, an I -O -N. confirmation. Something with an I O N at the end. Hey, dude, <laughs> pay us in happiness, please. Do that. If not, hey, give us a thumbs down. Tell us you hate us. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I won't be able to sleep at night. <laughs> Jason, quarterback number 10. We're going to go over right now. So let me look at my rankings. I got this up. I have him, I'm much higher on this dude than you are. I have him at 11. Jason, you have him at 16. Uh, and it's funny because he's outside of our top 10. But Jason and I, you know, quarterbacks are kind of, it's like, dude, Jason and I talk all the time. And we are still pretty different on a lot of quarterbacks. Just look at our Dak Prescott conversation yesterday. So that is why we're going over, you know, somebody that's 11 and 16 in a top 10. It's because we are very different. But anyways, Jason, Justin Fields last season, I do want to go over. So fantasy finish per, you know, as a quarterback a week, he finished. So he went, let's see, let's start with week number six. He was quarterback eight, quarterback five, quarterback five, quarterback one, quarterback one, quarterback seven, quarterback five, quarterback seven, quarterback 25, quarterback 10. So like. Dude, this is like Michael Vick without the weapons and talent. But still, <laughs> uh, dude, if you watch this game, it is. I hated watching this because I dropped Cole Komet, and then he went off as soon as I dropped him. Dude, I don't care, Jason. They picked up Devin Moore. I they have just been talking about like he's he said he's going to break the four thousand uh, yard whatever DJ but, Moore. DJ Moore, thank you very much. Yeah. He's talking about breaking you know, throwing for four thousand yards this year putting a lot of pressure on himself. But, dude, Lamar Jackson has never thrown over 3,100 yards, so I do not think he needs to throw that much. Just keep on running the ball, dude. And what people are chasing right now are those number one finishes, back-to-back -back number one quarterbacks, dude. 42 points, 40 points, back-to-back 40-point -back games, dude. It is insane. So that is what we're looking at here. I am not personally investing into Justin Fields, but I can see why people are. How do you feel about Justin Fields, Jason? I feel like he's the 16th. Best fantasy quarterback to get. This is Obviously. a this is a quarterback that could definitely turn around and bite me in the butt. And the main reason is is because his passing touchdowns, his the passing game does not exist. How can you call this guy a dual threat when all he does is a runner? Which is great. I'm glad that he could get eight rushing touchdowns, a, a thousand yards. He averaged 19.7 points per game mm -hmm. and half point PPR. Like all that is amazing. Um, there was like a span. What was it? What do I got here? Week seven through 15, like he had seven rushing touchdowns and 11 passing touchdowns. That was a, 
uh, the most in any span in uh, last year for him. But he was only over 200 passing once, and he only had one game with 25 attempts during that span. So obviously it's like he's putting up the points, but the passing is not a big – is not a part of the plan for him. It's all about the running. Um, he played in 15 games last year. He missed a couple because of injury. And 40, 40, 46% of those games, his completion percentage was under 60. 60 and lower in almost half of his games last year. Yeah, DJ Moore is going to help out that passing game, right? He's a threat. But uh, head coach Matt Eberfuss, you know, we said it before, he's a he run. <laughs> He's a he's a run first coach, and it's just my whole thing is like he's a very talented uh, runner, but I don't trust my uh, my QB one getting hit two hundred times a year, right? He had a lot of attempts last year. He's getting he's he's a smaller dude getting hit by those linebackers, by those defense alignment, and kind of saw it towards the end of the year last year where he was getting a little bit banged up. Getting hit that much, I'm, I'm just afraid. You know, we see this with, like, Lamar Jackson as well. You know, he is a runner. He's a dual threat. But has Lamar Jackson been there at the end of the year, the last two years? No, he hasn't. And that's just what I'm afraid of, right? If he's, if he's healthy throughout the whole year, this guy, he's probably going to be on some championship teams next year. Yeah, But I'm good. just – I'm looking – I'm trying to look into the future, and I don't like the fact my quarterback would be getting hit 200 times. No, and you're right, dude. Like uh, Lamar Jackson's played 12 games the last two seasons, and but he like I'm kind of thinking I was like, dude, he's, he doesn't have an offensive head coach, and I'm like, it's almost good that he has a defensive head coach because he's like, just run the ball, dude, just run it every single time. Mm-hmm. And he was second in the league, Jason, behind. Uh, he almost had as many rushes as Jalen Hurts, but not quite. I think Jalen Hurts actually played. No, they both miss uh, missed a couple games. So yeah, both missed two games. So he's kind of like in that same echelon as far as rushing with uh, Jalen Hurts and his and his offensive line. Jason is in the middle, whereas Jalen Hurts is a you know number one offensive line. All right, yeah. dude. Um, next up, I do want to talk about Jared Goff. I did release a short about him. He is what he finished as a number ten quarterback last season, Jason. He's getting drafted as the number 18 quarterback this season in the same round as Kenny Pickett and Bryce Young. It is literally criminal. I think this is like, dude, this is crazy, man. Like him, there is no late. Like I I was telling somebody on our show, he is the late round quarterback strategy this year. Him, Brock Purdy, and probably Russell Wilson once we see how things shake out. Oh, man. We've got a question for you after this, Jason. Don't let me transition from player to player after this. I'll try my best, sir. (laughs) okay and uh anyways jason numbers i think it's like the number oh i have it right here dude that's why i have it uh number four offensive line ranked offensive line number eight strength of schedule and so that's pretty much what i have going on right there for jared goff it's just it's where he is being drafted is just insane like is he gonna be a top five quarterback no is he gonna be a top 10 quarterback probably and he's being drafted as a number 18 um also 12 games for the lions this year are played in the dome so way more than half not going to be dealing with a lot of outside weather when it comes to end of the year uh i'm with you tyler i think there's a lot of hate for jared goff you know once he gets i think also it's just like the the lions because of how the record been for the past like 20 years i feel like when you got players going there there's like it's like tainted and you know, so when Jared Goff went to the Lions, it was already kind of just like his name was tainted a little bit. But he went out and had a great year last year, right? He was fifth in touchdown. Um, and he had 29. Oh, which, okay, he was fifth in touchdowns with 29. And he was seventh in deep ball completion last year. He did average 16.7 points per game and half point PPR. And this was a player who probably was not even drafted. And he was picked up off of waivers, right? And he was the third best passing yards uh, in his career last year with 4,438. So the dude kind of like went out there and balled up, breaking for that paycheck. And that's losing his uh, safety, dude. Or, not a safety, but, you know, like his safety blanket in TJ Hawkinson. And then, Jason, what did they do in the draft? Rounds one and two, they went and drafted pass catchers. Dude, Gibbs 
Laporta. Laporta is on my sleeper tight end list. If I'm waiting for tight ends, I'm picking up Laporta. Laporta. But there you go, dude. I'm on Raw. Uh, James Jameson Williams or whatever in the middle of the season because he went and gambled his life away, like Kenny Rogers. Oh yeah. crap! <laughs> yeah. I mean, that kind of sums up what you were just saying there. Like, you know, he's going into this year. He says, I'm uh, Monra St. Brown, who's a ball magnet. They drafted possibly Jamar Gibbs, who's going to be like, uh, why did I say possibly? And drafted possibly? No, they drafted Jameer Gibbs, who's uh, a great runner, and he's got catching skills. Losing Jamal Williams can actually improve Jared Goff's touchdown rate by throwing it more in the inside the five, or 10-yard line for next year, not having to rely on. Jamal Williams, Williams getting 17 touchdowns. Yeah, and I was I was hoping to pick up Jameson Williams in the offseason. Um, I was really – for a while I was telling people to pick him up on waiver wires and stash him late for leagues uh, last season, but yeah, it didn't really work. Out I think the huge thing is going to be Jameer Gibbs. If this dude's taking screen 70 yards for a touchdown, oh, that helps out Jared Goff too. I mean, I think that Gibbs is just as talented as, as Swift, but – it just, you know, it's the unknown. But Gibbs is going to play probably the whole year. I, exactly. I, I, it's the unknown that entices us and that we don't know how healthy he can stay. Yeah. Um, all right, Jason. All of a sudden, it feels like your house in here. And then I started smelling smoke. I feel the heat. <laughs> it's the time for the barbecue question of the week. Woo! <laughs> a, couple, oh, a little late. A little late. But we're this getting is- there. Is this is like a commercial? And, and I drank too much, commercial. and I drank too much before this episode. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this is the barbecue question of the week, where we answer the questions that you want to know. And this week's question is for Tyler: Which quarterback are you eyeing? Keep an eye on. Because we talked about Jared Goff being a value dude. Like, if Aaron Rodgers' offensive line can show up to training camp healthy-ish, I think he's ranked. Let's see, dude. Uh, he they have the uh, Rodgers. 28th offensive line ranked offensive line this season. But the pro, the thing is they've got Vera Tucker, who is an all pro. He got injured last season. They have Mikai Becton. And I remember when he was coming out, I was paying attention to where he went because he was so dominant in college. And then he's been injured, injured, injured for the Jets. But he's supposed to be coming back healthy this season. Then they got Connor McGovern. And I, I can't remember if that was from the Cowboys last season or whatever. But he was like the 10th ranked center last season. So you're looking at this. They have their tackles covered. They've got their center covered. And that's all Seattle needed last season to have a pretty good offensive line. Um, so, yeah, dude. Anyways, I need to see. Like, my rankings of Rodgers really depends on offensive line. Because if his offensive line doesn't show up and it's like, oh, PUP, PUP list, PUP list, or whatever. As much as I believe in Aaron Rodgers saying F you to the league, F you to the Packers, F you to Gouda Kunst, um, and just like balling out. He can't ball out when people are going to be hitting him all the time. So, yeah, that is my issue. Uh, didn't the Browns also lose a – or not the Browns. The Jets lose a lineman last year like Dwayne Brown. Dude, he's, coming back. He's, actually, he's actually on the team still. And I thought he was a good offensive tackle. He was like 60 – he was like the 60th ranked offensive tackle last season. So, Dwayne Brown used to be good. And I, I used to call him out, and I was like, dude, Dwayne Brown could be good for them. But maybe he's just past that point. I don't know. I don't really. Well, know. he didn't play last year. He he got injured, so he's coming back. Is that what it was? Because I was like, yeah. dude, I see him on the roster, and nobody's talking about him. And PFF has him ranked low, and I'm like, dude, from what I remember, Dwayne Brown was good. So yeah, he's good, and he's cut. Now he's making a comeback because uh, I don't know what it was about, but he yeah he got injured I think in preseason, and uh, he missed most. He missed all the year, and now he's going to be on on that line helping out Rodgers and his team. Jason. Yeah. Guess who's next? Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. people. So Aaron Rodgers. What rank? He's being, he is being drafted. He is ranked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's on our he's number eight for us. I have him twelve. Jason has him eight. So Jason is higher on him. And it's just How like is that possible. Dude, I know because I've been pushing <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> like, but then so I was awful. like, Okay, let's just talk about J.J. Zachariason, guys. Okay. I really like J.J. Zachariason, and uh, I listened to him talking about how if you're going to be a top five quarterback, like literally, you you need to be rushing the ball. Like, it's almost impossible unless you were – who was it? I can't remember. Oh, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, yeah. 
and you have to like literally have like quarterback rushes quite often. So I'm putting like Rodgers in the same tier as Goff and like, um, and I, but I just see, I think, you know, Rodgers is way more talented than the Goff. Rodgers could have a very special season. He's even talking about it himself right now. I just was listening to some stuff. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, dude. It's just like, I feel like Goff ha- has a much higher floor, but dude, Aaron Rodgers' ceiling is insane. MVP, like top six. So yeah, like I'm just putting him, I can't, I'm just putting him behind quarterbacks I know that run the ball. So he is the highest quarterback that I have that doesn't run the ball. If that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, he's probably going to have a magical season, Tyler, because he said, you know, he was just interviewed about possible uh, multiple years with the Jets unless he has a miracle season and he's going to ride off in the sunset. And can we just see him doing that? Just balling out? I mean, I can't. I can. So last year he had 26 touchdowns and he was under 4,000 passing yards, 14 points per game. And I felt that. I felt that because I drafted him last year and it's so rough going up against these quarterbacks that are putting up 20, 25 points every game and your quarterback is getting you 14. Um, and since 2008, Rodgers never averaged 17 points per game. Like he never even averaged that. And then last year he got 14. It was, it was horrible. So 2022 was a very down year for him. Uh, Two thirds of his wide receiver core were rookies. And we all know how Aaron Rodgers feels about rookies. It's, He's like, we already expect you to come in as a seventh-year vet and just know everything. So putting people in the doghouses all year. Um, some say it's the start of Aaron Rodgers' regression in his career. Maybe, maybe not. Some people may believe that. Um, but with Live the Jets, comment, Jason. Live comment. Live comment. You ready? Yeah. This is what the other, is what the other shows do. Draft uh, – god dang it. Something Lily. Draft players in their contract year, Jason. Yes, yes. I've, I. Th- th- that's part of the reason why I'm saying like Kirk Cousins is is where he is, and it's just because it's like it's a contract year for him, and he wants to ball out and make some money. That's why. That's one of the reasons why I haven't ranked. Um, one of the things though, too, just to finish up on this, it's like he's going to be playing with Garrett Wilson, where he's, they're already saying the next Devonte Adams. They have a speedster in McCole Hardman. And his best friend, Alan Lazard's there. And they got seven young running backs who could catch the ball and run. They have a solid defense. And this is going to be like a revenge year for the Jets. Like you said, it's like, F you, F you, F you, F you. I can still play. And we all know when Rodgers is serious, he's dangerous. Okay. Jason, I do want to say, I forgot to go over this. Rodgers' best three years came under Hackett with the Packers. Rodgers' worst year, he still threw 11 more touchdowns than the Jets' 22, 2022 quarterbacks, which is kind of pretty funny. The Jets' quarterbacks were pressured 88 more times than Rodgers was last season. So, dude, the Packers, as crappy as, they, as they've, you know, supplied skill positions, they put, you know, they've put uh, a top 10 offensive line in front of Aaron Rodgers pretty much every season. So that is what I am afraid of. If things go wrong, dude, it's going to be bad. Because I, I was reading some stat about Aaron Rodgers being pressured. He is, he sucks. Like, last couple of years... It's not good when he gets pressured. So, like I said, he can be great or he can be average to below average. We're going to need to see. But, dude, his motivation is there. I am believing in Aaron Rodgers so far. Can I ask you a question before I move on? What? Do you believe Aaron Rodgers is uh, regressing? Oh, yeah, because he can't run the ball like he used to. Oh, yeah, he used to, he used to put up some yards out there with those with those. Yeah, we got to start, Jason. He was a, a scout. Remember, they were going to play the Cowboys, and he was like a – he was acting like he was Tony Romo. And that's like he was – so he was doing all – running around and throwing the ball, and they were like, oh, my God, dude, what do we have here? So, <laughs> like, he was very – he was very mobile. Mo- time to go – time to get mobile. Time to go mobile. All right, Jason, you saw who I just wrote up. He was my love last season. I was pushing him all last season, and it worked out. Woo! I think you were, too. Um, my only Yeah, so we got Trevor Lawrence. Quarterback eight last year. He's being drafted as quarterback eight. So it's not like you're getting a value on um, Trevor Lawrence, but he is one of the few quarterbacks that we can see jumping into the top five, and that is what you want. Completion percentage last season, you know, with Urban Meyer, 59%, went up to 66%. Yards per attempt, which is big, 5.2, went up to 7.3. TD rate went from 2.0% uh, to 4.3%, so over doubled. 
Five touchdown runs last year and 10th in the NFL in rushing attempts for quarterbacks. That is what we want. Five top five finishes. That is the same as Joe Burrow. But they did lose Jawan Taylor, Jason, to the Chiefs. I think it was Jawan Taylor. I don't know. I've, I've yep. said his name about a thousand times. And people from Duval County keep on telling me, Jawan he's not Taylor. good. Well, guess what, dude? Uh, the Chiefs want him to pre- protect Patrick Mahomes. He was yeah. the third best offensive lineman on the free agency. So whatever, dude. I don't care yeah. what you say. He's better than what you have. <laughs> and uh, So, yeah, dude. It's just very scary for me to put T-Law. That's why I have him. Like I think I have him ranked, oh, I have him ranked nine. You have him six. I have him ranked below Deshaun Watson, or just I have Deshaun Watson above him right now, just because Deshaun Watson has the number two offensive line and he has the numbers 27. So we need to see how this offensive line is going to perform. Yeah, you basically gave a lot of stats that I was going to give. So mine's going to be a lot shorter now. He does have a horrible line. He did <laughs> average. Uh, no, you're fine, man. Makes it this makes it go by faster. He did uh, average 17.4 <sighs> points per game last year. <sighs> horrible offensive line. Uh, passing block win rate. Yeah, they were 31st in the league last year. So mm, that's not good. Doug Peterson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some good things, though. That he is getting Calvin Ridley, and we're both pretty high on him, added to oh. the wide receiver core. Um, 66 completion rate in 2022. And this is what I, what I do like about him, that he was eighth in the red zone attempts last year with 82. And, you know, that that's huge because, you know, getting closer to the touchdown, you're in the red zone. You like to see the quarterback you're getting throwing the ball instead of, like, running the ball or, you know, handoff. You know, they're on a good team. But the thing is, like, I got a feeling this year that Doug Peterson wants to run the ball more. Lance Villy, Jason, he left that comment. He just subscribed. Woo! Oh, yeah. 373. Thank you to everybody. Uh, 373. We are making our large tree. I, I, our roots are going deep. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about, dude. My <laughs> job. All right. That so that yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was basically it. He those my my whole like I would actually actually I don't know if I would actually put him any higher, but I do have a feeling that Doug Peterson wants to uh Run the ball more this year. In multiple comments. Is, yeah, the only issue is that Doug Peterson, when he was like, they, their offensive line was pretty good, man, when he was the coach there. Mm-hmm. So it's like, as much as I believe in Doug Peterson, I don't know if he can overcome a bad offensive line. Like, I still need to see that. All right, Jason, next up, we got Freaky L. You ready for that? Oh, yeah. He's probably my longest one here. So Lamar Jackson, I think I owned him two or three years ago after his MVP season, and I got he got injured. Like I said, he's only played two, 12 games both uh, of the last two seasons, so that's why people are just like, you know, they've got a bad taste in their mouth on him. Let me see if I can find this fool. I've got all these papers everywhere. This uh, Lamar. So the number three offensive line, Jason, like even <laughs> they put that huge dude. I can't remember his name. He's like a huge – Oh, crap. I can't remember his name. He plays fullback. They put like offensive linemen as their fullbacks, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. They added Smart. OBJ and Flowers. And I lo- dude, you know that I thought Flowers was the best quarter or best wide receiver in the draft. Um, I don't really care about OBJ, but I do think that he can help in the red zone with Mark Andrews. He averaged 20.3 points per game last season, which is tied for um, like fourth place with Burrow. So he's in that Burrow category. But now he's now he's kind of have like, dude, it's just a better offensive line than Burrow. Um, a much better offensive line than Burrow, and maybe even more weapons now. Eh, no, we'll take that back. We're getting more weapons over there as well. And then Jason, two 40 point games, week two, week two and three. So that's what you're chasing there. Second season, that's uh, yeah, that's right. Average 63.4 rushing yards during uh, per game during his NFL career. So that's like six extra points per game, dude. Over his career, Jason, how do you feel about Lamar? Yeah, uh, one of the stats that you were going after was one that I put in too, and it was like his first like three games of the season last year. He had yeah. 10, 10 passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. We were all looking at each other like, uh, we messed up, dude. We yeah, were, I got Trey Lance. What the hell was I doing? We were like, uh, we bad, <laughs> we bad, but the thing is, 
after that, he had 17 touchdowns in 12 games, and three of them are rushing. He did average 19.7 points per game. They have a good offensive line. They have a great offensive line, who, are, who is also sixth in pass blocking win rate at 66%. That's, that's great. Um, but after the start of the season, you know, that's when the injuries really start to hit the Ravens. Um, Lamar averaged 10 rushes a game all year, which is great. That's kind of like what you said. That was a rough average. That was an eye test average. You know, where you just look at it and I'm like, I think that's 10 <laughs> without doing the calculation, you know? Um, the one thing that has me really kind of excited about this is that this year we're going to see a different Ravens team. You know, it appears with drafting Zay Flowers, signing Odell Beckham, and new offensive coordinator Todd Munkin is going to try and unleash Lamar's passing ability, like his final form. Like, we already know he could rush the ball. We even know he could pass the ball. But apparently there is another layer, another level to Lamar's passing ability that we have not seen yet, and they want to try to unlock it uh, next year. Yeah. Um, But also, like – or, yeah, next year. Let's try not to forget that Rashad Bateman, you know, he had 13 targets and 167 yards and two touchdowns in those first two games before the injury started hitting everybody. And he is uh, getting Mark Andrews again next year, returning healthy. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm with you on all that stuff. Uh, all right, Jason. Next up. Who did I just write? Did I write anybody? No, I just erased it. Uh, I've been drinking, people. I've been drinking. We're talking <laughs> about Justin Herbert. And this is where, hey, if you can get Austin Eckler as a uh, on a podcast saying something about his own team, Pay attention to it, dude, because he is yep. like he gives all kinds of inside information. He's invested. I, I was, yeah, dude. And I was listening to him. Um, it was a couple months ago, but they were like, dude, Justin Herbert was so injured last year. You have no idea. Oh my god. And so my biggest thing here, Jason, is injury is you know reducing his price, like performance, whatever. Because he never he just stayed injured all year, dude. He never really came back. He just toughed it out, and then. Now he's got Kellen Moore, and it's all about depth per target. He has the weapons to like really attack, and now he gets a Kellen Moore who's like who Jason. He's like led the league in scoring what like two or three times over the last like six years. See, and then um, he also depth per target is always in the top ten. Joe Lombardi, the old offensive coordinator, you know, last season he was number two uh, or no, number two worse, so number thirty one in depth per target, right behind somebody else who I can't remember is really bad. So Austin Eckler is going to suffer from this, but dude, just uh, Justin Herbert is going to have a huge breakout season. He has a, uh, I forget what his offensive line is. I think number 11 offensive line and like number two strength of schedule or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Oh, I have it right here. Number three uh, strength of schedule. So yeah. Number 11 ranked offensive line. Number three, strength of schedule, three, three strength of schedule. I am getting dr- buzzed. Buzzed. <laughs> And uh, Jason, they they also drafted the uh, clone, Mike Williams clone, like in the first or second round. Yep, in the first round. Uh, last year was kind of a weird year for him. I mean, he had 27 touchdowns, but he was second in the league with around 4,700 passing yards. And you feel like that doesn't really add up. You would think if you're throwing for that much, you would have more touchdowns. Than just depth per target, Jason, getting that many yards with one of the worst depths per, depth per target is insane. Yeah. With injuries to himself, with injuries to Keenan Allen, with injuries to Mike Williams, the crazy year. It was just, it was crazy for Justin Herbert last year. Um, he did average 16 points per game, but the one stat I do like, Tyler, he was third in red zone attempts. I like that. But, okay, so the downfall is that the Chargers, their pass block win rate, they're 23rd, but this year, they have a returning Rashawn Slater. Remember that guy? He has that cool name, Slater. He's an amazing offensive lineman. Amazing. He's amazing. Uh, Keenan Allen, he needs to stay healthy, you know, and then you're going to get Mike Williams. Uh, he's going to play eight games next year because he gets hurt all the time and then went out and drafted Quentin Johnston. They still have Austin Eckler, who's a great catch, uh, pass catcher. And then you go, like you said, Tyler, Kellen Moore brings his top five uh, offensive system to the Chargers next year. Oh, yeah, baby. And um, so Jason and I both have him ranked five. ESPN is going seven. He's going like in the um, fourth round or something like that, maybe four or five turn in a 12-man league. 
So about the same time as Justin Fields, and I would much rather have Herbert with the offensive line than Fields. Like, you're just chasing dreams with Fields. Herbert is actually happening. So let's do Herbert over Fields. J- Jason, next I, up. I can't tell. Were you doing play on words there? Please tell me. Dreams of Fields? Field of Dreams? Oh, God. I Dude, I, I'm like, oh, I'm drinking, dude. I can't. Dude, go you, dude. For, I can't we connect need... dots right now. I'm like, no, that was, I thought that was great. I was like, oh my gosh. Just play that offense, uh, the beautiful mind, uh, you know, trigonometry <laughs> in front of my mind. I'm just like, okay. Okay. Joe Burrow, consensus, consensus number four between us, ESPN, everybody. He is going like, you know, two, three uh, in the third round, pretty much middle. He has two number one wide receivers. He has the, one of the worst offensive lines up here, but still, do there's some, I mean, Lawrence, Rodgers, and Allen both all have worse offensive lines. But by the end of last season, dude, the Bengals' offensive line was like top five in pass protecting and run um, run blocking or whatever. So I still believe in their offensive line. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, let's see. Where do I have it? I've got it right here. So he was number – Jason, he had a career yeah. high of 35 touchdowns. He was number seven in rushing attempts. You do not think about that. He ran for five touchdowns. I do not see him being a running quarterback, but I do see him being more of like a Tom Brady quarterback sneak quarterback. I, I think like five touchdowns is going to be in the realm of kind of what he's averaging until he's done in his career. He has two number one wide receivers. He's got a almost he's got a sixty nine percent dude completion percentage the last two years. That's insane. He has five top three finishes and three as number one quarterback. So you're chasing. He's like one of the very few that even can get three number one quarterback overalls, dude. That's insane. And in a week. So that's what you're chasing him. That's what makes him different than a uh, different than Lawrence, even though they have the same amount of like top fives. It's, it's like his ceiling is just higher. Yeah. I mean, what else can I add to this that you, you didn't say, you know, he was fifth in passing yards last year. He averaged 21 points per game. You did say his offensive line was not the best. And, you know, they were 30th in pass block and win rate. Um, he only had two games under 50 points last year in half point PPR. He wow. did have 12, he did have 12 interceptions, but four of them came in the very first week when like that line for the Bengals was just at its worst. Astros. We got to remember last year, I think there was only one offensive lineman that stayed with the team and everybody was new. So it was like, you got to build that rapport. You got to build that chemistry. And it took a few games for that to happen. Um, they have arguably like the best trio wide receiver uh, core in the league. And he was fifth in red zone attempts last year. So. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, there's nothing to, it's just my problem is where he is going. Jason, I'm not really targeting Burrow. I, my my cutoff is is uh, Hertz and well, Allen. My cutoff is Allen because I have Hertz over Allen. But then if I don't get um, Burrow, I'm fine. I will wait until Lawrence or Deshaun Watson, and I feel like that's going to be just totally like their potential is almost the same. So I, I'm okay with that. And it's not like I see Joe Burrow running more. I think that his running years. Like quarterback stinks are there, but I don't think he's going to be like in the middle, like, you know, seventh in the league in rushing quarterbacks again or whatever I said. Right now, Anyways. Joe Burrow is uh, ADP's third round and a 12 man. Yeah. So you're getting him a little bit. Uh, let's see. Is this, let me see if his ADP is after how far it is after Hertz. Cause I, I, so his, yeah, he's like eight picks after Hertz right now, but I just value Hertz so much more right now. I, I just, I think Hertz is a whole another player. All right, <clears throat> All right Jason. Let's see. Is it Hurts next? Oh, speaking of Hurts, love Hurts. Oh man, I messed this up, didn't I? I have Hurts. I had Hurts over Allen. Uh, okay, I have uh, yeah, two point five. I screwed up that. It's okay though. Three, but here we go, dude. I have Hurts number two. He's my number two quarterback because of his offensive line and his consistency. Like the amount of games outside of like the top six are just crazy. Uh, Jason, you have him. You have him number three behind Allen and Mahomes, and that is consensus. Like consensus across the league, I think there's only one other person in the professional rankings. You know, I don't consider myself a professional like analyst or whatever, but I've seen one professional analyst have uh, Hertz number two, and I am with him, dude. Hertz, 
he uh, had 11 rushes per game compared to Allen, who Allen had, you know, 7.8 rushes per game. That's like, dude, that's a lot, like three more rushes per game. Uh, and Hertz had, let me go. He was number one in rushing attempts with 165. He had 13 rushing touchdowns, Jason. He had a, he has a uh, number. Oh, I, I screwed this up. Oh yeah, there we go. He has a 66.5 percentage uh, completion percentage with a 1.3 intercept, intercept interception rate. That is insane. 23 rushing touchdowns over the last two. He had 13 last year, Jason. He had 750 rushing t- uh, yards in both of those years. 10 top, 10 top five finishes. Eight top three finishes. That is freaking crazy. Half of his games, Jason, he played. He was a top three quarterback. He missed two games. So that's even more than half the games. He had three games only outside the top six. That's freaking crazy. I'm going to pick up Hurts in the second round. I don't give a crap, dude. I yeah. don't care. I'm getting hurt second round. You can eat it. Kick rocks. Eat it and eat it good. I'm drinking, man. I'm, I'm, I feel. I can tell it's harder for me to talk. Oh, my God. Uh, Yeah, he had an amazing year last year. You know, whoever drafted him, you know, he probably helped you get to the playoffs and to the championship last year. He is behind the number one uh, offensive line in the league and who's uh, the Eagles' pass block win rate. They're 12th. But – they have Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goderte, and now they got DeAndre Swift, who could be an amazing, uh, oh, my God, catch, pass catch running back. I always get those all mixed up. If he stays healthy. Uh, this, is, this is the one thing about me that I, that I don't like. He was 17th in red zone attempts, and he was only eight, and he only had eight attempts inside the 10-yard line. Um, the one thing about that is just like, yeah, he had 13 touchdowns last year. So it's like, we're hoping that that continues on that he it gets another 13 it touchdowns. Will. I'll tell you why in a minute. And, and then, uh, their offensive coordinator, uh, uh, offensive coordinator, Shane Stitch, and he's gone. So in my opinion, I don't see another like 13 touchdowns for next year, especially if he's following the trend for rushing quarterback, touch, rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. But I do see uh, his passing touchdowns. He only had 22 last year. I see that increasing. And then you're right, Tyler. Every year his uh, completion percentage improves. Jason, you were right on to call out the offensive coordinator change because that is a scare. But I remember listening to Nick Seriano. I think that's his name. God dang, I can't remember his name. Um, that fool, we're talking about the rugby. Remember the rugby The rugby rule? Like the rugby scrim? Like, you know, the uh, the crazy ass – play that they do oh crap yeah where they push yeah that's legal still and nick seriani said we're gonna do that till the wheels fall fall off we don't care yeah so that's what i'm saying dude he's gonna get 13 rushing touchdowns again like they are gonna play that play they are so built for that jalen hurts is so built for that play i am just totally believing in um you know and who they get they got rashad penny and and swift they obviously don't care who's who's back there they're just like (laughs) dude Six foot one. This guy squats like 600 pounds. We're just going to run him up the gut with all this meat behind him. Dude, it's crazy. So I, I totally understand what you're saying, but I, I remember hearing Nick Sirianni talk about that rule and how it's going to be like, we're going to abuse this rule until they change it. So, you know, catch up if you can. All right, Jason, next up. This guy was number three in rushing attempts with 124. He had seven rushing touchdowns. He was the number two quarterback last year. He has 4,000 yards in three straight years with 35 to 37 passing touchdowns in each of those years, which is freaking crazy. He's rushed for 700 plus yards in each of the last two seasons with at least six rushing touchdowns in those two. That's dude. It's like, we're talking about Superman here, Jason. He has 11 top five finishes, you know, whereas Hertz had 10, he had eight inside the top three, same as Hertz, but he had four outside the top six. And that is excluding the Bengals game where uh, DeMar Hamlin had his heart issue. So his problem, we're talking about Jalen or Jalen. We're talking about Josh Allen, Allen here, Josh Allen, the wild stallion. And that's the problem is he's wild. Like, dude, he will carry you in quarterback consistency. There's three quarterbacks that score 21 points or more 80% of the time or more. And that is Hertz, Allen and Mahomes. Then it drops down to like 62% with Mahomes or with uh, Burrow. That's why I want a top three. But the problem is, dude, when Allen is bad, he's freaking bad. Jason, how do you feel about Allen? 
Yeah, Allen's. Uh, I have him ranked as number two. He had 35. He was third in the league with 35 passing touchdowns, but he also had seven rushing touchdowns. He was seventh in passing yards, and he was second in airtime air yards a game with 306. He averaged 24.7 points per game in half point PPR. The Bills' O line is fourth in pass block win rate at 67. percent He was seventh in red zone pass attempts, which I love. And he was sixth in attempts within the 10-yard line. And the one thing I love about that stat, that if he's not passing it, him himself is rushing the ball in. So that's amazing to have with, like, a quarterback, right? And he averaged around 36 attempts a game. But my the whole thing with him is that – because I had digs, so I watched a lot of, like, Bills games last year. Like, the Buffalo Bills, they will go out and get huge leads in, like, the first half. And you're sitting here and you're just like, dude, we're going to have, like, a monster game from, like, Diggs or Allen. But they would just – they would get up 24 nothing at a halftime. And then in the second half, you barely would get anything from both those players. Both those, if they would have just continued on, you know, like what the 2007 uh, Patriots, where they didn't care, they were just like, we're just going to keep scoring, scoring until you can stop us. No stopping them. If they, if they could have just still kept producing numbers like that in like second half of games, dude, there was, there could have been a good chance that Allen and Diggs would have been both one at their position, but second half, they always seem to stall a little bit. And that's my only concern is like you, they need to get all their points in that first half because the second half, they didn't really do too great. And Jason, I uh, watch a lot of it's always Sunday in Philadelphia. I know you do too. Uh, I watched three new episodes today because I forgot that they were coming out with new episodes. Anyways, Jason, do they play in a dome Eagles? No. Oh, okay, I didn't think so. But what scares me about Josh Allen is that late weather, dude, late year weather, like in during the championships, he did, we didn't even know if he was going to play last season because of uh, they didn't know where they're going to have the game, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Kind of crazy. That's true. So I kind of factored that in as well. So bad offensive, offensive line. Let's see. He is like, dude, his, he's got the 23rd offensive line. And that is that is uh dude, Sean McDermott cannot figure out the offensive line. You, if you listen to Colin, Colin Cowherd, he always talks about how this guy cannot, he's a defensive coach. The defensive coaches cannot fix offensive lines. All right, Jason. Number one quarterback, Patrick Easy. Mahomes. You and I both love him. Yeah. Let's see. Career high, 5,250 yards last season. League high, 41 touchdowns. To give him his second quarterback one finish in fantasy football in his five years starting. So he started five years. He finished quarterback one two times. Last year was that was about Tyreek Hill. Dude, his offensive line is still great, and we're that's what we are really minimizing the risk there with a number five offensive line. Jason, they did not get uh, Hopkins, which would have helped them a lot, but still they drafted Rasheed Rice. I think Jarrett McKinnon is being undervalued during regular season right now. Uh, Travis Kelsey's still there, dude. Tony, a full year, a full off season. How do you feel about Mahomes? This is pretty much the easiest thing to debate discuss give opinions for because first in touchdowns first in passing he was the only quarterback to get over 5,000 yards uh, passing last year he did rush for four touchdowns 25 point uh, 24.5 points per game the Chiefs are number one in pass blocking he was number one in red zone attempts number two was Kirk Cousins and he had 24 less attempts in the red zone and he was also first in attempts inside the 10-yard line. Most 300-yard oh. games with 10. Josh Allen was second with six. And he did all this with no wide right receivers. And now they're going to have some help with Kadarius Toney with a full year. And they draft a rookie, Rashid Rice. They're, I mean, mic drop. There's, there's no. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not hard, dude. And what we are saying is that consistency equals fantasy success. So, like, Daniel Jones, who gets you peaks and valleys, yeah, he's going to win you weeks, but he's going to lose you just as many weeks. So, like, what I have noticed over the last couple seasons when I have been trying to do these late quarterbacks, dude, Patrick Mahomes is, like, literally, like, top four or top five uh, most common player on each of the last, like, the last, like, three or four championship squads. Just get a quarterback early, which I'm going to try to do. And if not, Jason, if I don't get a quarterback top three, I'm lit- I know two minutes left. No, no, I'm getting, I'm getting my quarterback in the second round. But yeah, me too. I'm going to get Goff. I was just talking to our uh, our listener. I can't remember. I should know his name, dude, by now. But he's, he's been commenting a lot. Super cool dude. Shout out. Um, 
But yeah, uh, he's got like a sword. stat. He's got like a sword like this. I know. It's pretty <laughs> picture cool. it. I know you see that. I have one last stat. Oh, are you done? I thought you were still going. Okay. Um, most passing touchdowns over the last two seasons among athletic players. Patrick Mahomes, 78. Josh Allen, 71. Joe, Joe Burrow, 69. Justin Herbert, 63. Aaron Rodgers, 63. They are all in the AFC. My I'm going to finish my sixth beer, Jason. Holy moly. There you go. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> Crush, scream. Yeah. Diablo 4 time, people. Diablo 4. Jason's got family in town. That means I got to turn to the sanctuary. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this. Remember, we get paid in happiness. And you want to make us happy. You click that, thumb, you click that thumbs up. I can't talk. You watch out for our future episodes, Jason. I love you. I love the people. I love everybody. <laughs> we got a, I think we got a mock draft on Sunday, right? We got a mock draft with Jason's dad, so catch that out. 4.0. There you go. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm hanging up because this is from Boondock Saints. Rocco. Uh, catch Deuces. you on the flip side.